We are making an MR2 Spider track car. Over the past few to four years, our MR2 has been a driving force in our journey. We've cherished every moment, pushing it to the limits on the track, enduring a dramatic engine blowout, piecing it back together, and enhancing its performance along the way. But now, it's time to give it a makeover. Follow along to watch us build this GT4 inspired body kit for this car. Today, we're going to go over how we designed and installed the wing, side skirt, hood duct, rear spats, diffuser, and the front bumper. Here's how the car looks currently. We're gonna start with the wing. Let's go! So here, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the design process of this. We have a video game model here of our MR2 Spider, and unfortunately this was designed a while ago, so we don't have kind of the process of the iterations and all that, but this is what the car looks like in a video game form. We locked it down with uh, the design team and this is ultimately what it ended up with. We have a wonderful looking front bumper, single vent opening with built-in canards. We have this flying buttress design that I really like. Um, this is an old version of it where we tried to get it to clear the, the trunk and the, the deck. We were trying to get that that rear vent lined up in there but ultimately i decided this was just too gaudy and and didn't look that great so another cool thing i wanted to point out is we are going to try to make this hard top a t-top but more info on that later since that's not a project that we finished in this particular episode so now going into the final design this is kind of what we decided on this is the actual final design of the mr2 um you can see this is actually scan data but we did uh, ultimately do a similar flying buttress, but we did have it go over the trunk. So it used to be here, now it's here. We have the wing, the duct belt, the Epsilon diffuser, the rear spats, the front bumper, we have the eyelid, the hood vents, and all that. Uh, I would love to do another video on just design elements, but for now, this was designed quite a while ago. So unfortunately, uh, we never really recorded that process, but I'd, I'd love to go into this in another episode. But for now, this is what the car looks like. And let's go from butt to front as far as getting this installed on the car. So we're figuring out where on the trunk we need to cut using our terrible tool measurements because I don't have the scans. I don't want to align it. Um, but yeah, we got to slot the trunk near the tail light. Yeah, basically we're going to cut to right about this line right here. So we're going to go ahead and mount these in first so we can figure out where we want to mount it and then we need to cut to like right about here so he's already gone ahead and taped it i got some paint pens and we're gonna start mounting this wing it's a true chassis mount wing but the irony here is that it's not a very big wing so it doesn't really need to be chassis mounted this one yeah it doesn't really need it it's not I, yeah don't worry about it there's already uh rivets that are i'm more worried about the rivnets holding it in I mean, worst case scenario, we have access to the nut in the back, so it's not too bad, but yeah, it's... Careful! Brian got it on. It looks good. It's small, for sure. But what do you think? I think it looks good. It fits the car. Fits the car. Yeah, exactly. Small car. All right, so we're going to close the trunk, start marking things, and go from there. So we marked what we need to cut. We're going to pull the trunk off because it's easier to cut it off trunk off and I, I, yeah, and we're gonna cut it. Sick. All right, let's go ahead and cut this. Let's get it out here. Cool, thank you, Andy. Fire in the hole! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I didn't even hear the start, I just nicked it. I'm gonna fucking throw it out. <laughs> Look at how much rigidity this movie is. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> 
TM. So we're prepping the uh, the hood vents now. I don't know if we're gonna do them today, but uh, this one's got the stuff removed, and I'm in the process of taking the support material off this one. And look, it's, it's coming off as one nice large piece. It's great. I love it. Look at that. Damn. Nice. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. Most of the times I just measure twice and cut. Oh, hello, happy Sunday. It's the day after we did the wing on the car. The wing looks good. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm still waiting on some rubber trim to get here. And then Sam and I came up with a plan on how we're gonna do the exhaust. So hopefully we're gonna do that next, next week. But today we're going to, I don't know if I'm gonna cut the hood, but at least I'm gonna measure it. So I'm gonna tape out. I need to cut for the fender and I'm gonna have to tape off how I'm gonna cut the hood. So. Here, here, whatever, Dimitri took care of the measurements for me. I'm gonna go pull up the measurements and I'm gonna start marking it up. I've gotten my measuring tape, masking tape, and a couple of pens. And now it's time to mark up this and figure out where I'm going to cut. The way I'm gonna do this, Dimitri gave me measurements for the fender, but the man's gave me fractional inches. I don't even know how I'm gonna begin trying to do that. I guess I'll do the best I can to measure. He gave me, I think, these measurements and then all this i'm gonna put dots um, at all the major points and then i'm gonna tape it off basically i'm gonna cut at the tape line and then um, see where that gets me so hopefully i don't struggle too much but i'll I'm, i'll take all the measurements and do some math in my head and go ahead and cut so yeah well after going off some dimitri measurements this is more or less good and then I'm going to do the hood, and then I'm going to start pulling the fenders off and cut it. So both sides fenders done. I'm looking at the hood measurement. <laughs> There's like three and a half million measurements. So I'll struggle through this and hopefully I'll have it taped within an hour. And then I can start cutting everything. Alright, so it's getting late, running out of sunlight. But uh, I've got everything taped up. See that? Looks sick. That's all taped up. My fender vents are mocked up, so that i'm excited um fortunately out of the sunlight so i don't think i'm gonna cut them today i'll come back i don't know maybe later this week i'll cut them out same thing with the fenders and get this build on the road so i'm gonna turn the turn everything off and hopefully we'll start cutting next time around all right so it's in the evening uh we're gonna go ahead and cut this fender and let's see how everything fits So everything's back on. I'm gonna do a quick body line check. Uh, that one's okay. This one's okay. It's a little bigger, so I might adjust it, push it in a little more. But other than that, everything looks okay. And tomorrow I'm gonna put these side skirts on. But yeah, let's do it next tomorrow. I'm gonna make a somewhat tough decision since it's screwed in. Um, since this isn't fully uh, mounted yet and I don't want this falling off and more importantly I'm still painting this so I can still fill in these holes I'm just gonna zap screw this the whole way through just to make sure it doesn't fall out so I think I'm just gonna put one here I'll probably put one here just to make sure it's good it's gonna suck it is whatever it is what it is luckily you won't be able to see it once it's all done but I just want to make sure it doesn't fall off so YOLO I'm gonna let this dry uh, those screws are just for mock-up purposes and then when I'm done I'll probably just take them back out and fill all those holes but for now this is good this will work it looks sick one side done Woo! so both sides are done i did a neat little trick to uh make this shorter because this was actually a little too long uh, it's cool it's cool it's it's, uh, it's drying i gotta let the silicone dry but my side skirts are on sick so i still don't have the rubber trim for the wing but that's okay we'll get there we'll get there Shoot, this is looking pretty good. I'm excited. Sick! My side skirts are on. And with the fender vents, which is sick, which is sick. Yeah!
So another thing I gotta do is this will hit my my vent. And you can tell if I play. I have to take this off and I'm gonna move it here. So let's go ahead and do that too. Shove that right here. And this will most likely go somewhere like here. I'll figure out how to mount it later, but yeah, I'll, I'll go like here or something. Okay, all right, it's time to cut. Point of no return. Cut it and let's see if it fits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that fits. That looks good. Let's see. Do it like that. Hell yeah. Alright, so that's one down. I know it fits, so let's go ahead and do the other one. So I've got it cut out. Mock this one in. It looks good. Right, I'm gonna need to take the tape off so I can do some final measurements to make this as symmetrical as possible. But Let's throw this back on the car and make sure it fits. So with the help of Sam, we're gonna go ahead and put this on and see how much clearance we have no. with the power seeing reservoir. So I've already moved. It's not secured, but it's moved. And we're gonna put on, go ahead. So this, this sits right here. Oh, it's in. So we just gotta move the fuse box and we should be good. Cool, just a couple of relocations of the fuse box, power steering pump, and yeah. This is what it looks like. I've gone ahead and moved the power steering. It's not mounted yet, and I took the fuse box off the car, but I'm gonna do a couple of final measurements to make sure that everything is more or less Good, so that's seven inches, that's seven inches, this is about four inches, and this is about four inches. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to self-tapper this in, just to hold it in place, it's not gonna be the final thing, but what that does is the self-tappers are gonna help me for when I eventually do glue and paint this. But for now, it's just gonna be self-tappered in, whatever, put another hole in the car, it's not a big deal. So I went ahead and made brackets like that, see if it works, and now we just gotta bleed the system. So let's go ahead and do that, see if it works. Oh, all right. Seems fine. I don't feel any air bubbles. Let's close the hood and see how it looks. I gotta clean everything up. We're obviously still in mock-up phase. Close the hood. Nice. So, I mean, it looks way out of place without the bumper in. But, the vents. So now we just gotta do some ducting. And it's good. Results. I got that. I got the... Fender cutouts, I got the wing, got the rear duck bill. So I think tomorrow we're gonna take this car to an exhaust shop, pull the bumper off, do the exhaust so I can finally put the diffuser and the spats on. It's late, I'm going to clean up, wash up and go home. But yeah, it looks, it looks sick. It looks sick. It looks sick. <laughs> so today, next day, we got the exhaust welded up, moved up. We got a new pipe put on. So we're gonna go ahead and install the diffuser in the rear spats. Um, in order to do that, these are the brackets to hold the diffuser in. The hardware is right there. And then we got the spats. The spats, I'm excited for, cause the spats actually go on like this. So I think it's gonna look really cool when everything's together. I need to put some screws in. But other than that, um, yeah, let's go ahead and put the diffuser on. So I just adhesive promoter the spats. Let's see what they look like. I'm gonna have to take the wheels off to do this when I install them, but that's fine. 
go right here. That line is right in the body line. Oh yeah. All right, let me just put some tape on it, pull these wheels off, get them mounted. That's one side on, tap screws, double-sided tape, and the other side. Wow, pretty good. Everything's mocked up. I probably need to trim this pipe a little more because when I put the tip on, it hits, which is fine. I'm just gonna trim cut on area here to accommodate. Not a huge deal. All right, so let's get this finished. Wheels are on, I'm gonna drop the car. This tip needs to be welded tomorrow by Sam. The sticker's on, most important part. But look at that. It's the tolerance is pretty pretty good. I gotta I gotta fix it's got an eighth inch of shift to the right, which is easy. I can fix that in the brackets, but oh my god, that looks good. <laughs> oh that's low. That looks good. Oh my god, that looks really good. Oh, I'm stoked. That came out great. Uh, all that means we got left is the hard top and the front bumper. The front bumper is printing right now. Let me show you guys. Yep, the front bumper is the last big piece before we start the hard top. I can't wait to put that back on and complete the look. Um, that concludes, I guess, this portion. Next up, we're just gonna put the front bumper back on and then we're gonna take the soft top and start doing the roof which is gonna be the hard part. I'm excited about that one. Yeah, next episode, whatever. Cut, whatever, same episode, who knows? So it's Saturday. The MR2 bumper is done printing. Yeah, look at that. So we got another bumper. I got the beginning, middle, and the end. Got the beginning, the yeah. Wow, look at that. One bumper. Bumper done. Time to put it on the car. So 90% of it's done. Obviously I have to get the small stuff off, but it's good enough for me to kind of stack it. One piece, middle piece. There's flanges too, so it'll bolt together, but for now, Middle piece. Line it up. Now the top piece. And just like that. That's what the lumber looks like. Very cool. So it has reinforcement flanges and all that good stuff. So it's uh, Monday evening. We're working on getting this bumper prepped to go on the car. One thing I'm going to do this time is I'm going to actually resin coat it. So you can see uh, this bumper was printed in three parts. Right here right here and you can see the flange is underneath put it on our modix 180 exclusively i want to make sure this doesn't split on layer lines before i prep for paint uh, but i do want to run it for a little bit so i'm actually going to do something that i've been doing before and i got my little kit set up so i've been playing around with this kind of ran out of time and now i want to bring it up again so one thing i like to do uh when i post process 3d print i like to epoxy coat it what this does is it gives it a nice uh, smooth layer uh, for the epoxy to fill in the gaps and whatnot. And on top of that, uh, it gives a layer that the paint can actually bond to. So the epoxy sticks to the PET-G very well and it, um, it helps strengthen it and uh, prevents it from splitting between the layer lines. So as far as this, uh, I'm gonna get some mixing sticks that I use as straws. I have some cups. Um, I'm playing around with 
epoxies right now. I'm not sure which one I like more. Um, this is structural, high performance structural epoxy. So I might play around with this. I have the XTC 3D, which also works very well. Um, I think they're about the same price. I haven't decided which one I like yet. And I have some standard brushes and I have some silicone brushes. So this is my first time in a long time experimenting with this. I'm gonna throw this on a tripod and let's see if there's anything new I learned. Uh, I do this in a cool environment, so I get a little bit more working time. Throw on a pair of gloves. And 20 milliliters right there. So we just put the first coat on, let me get the light. Currently we're just gonna let it slow drift while it cures. And any weird imperfections we're gonna sand later. So I may or do one or two passes on this, we'll see. But this is for strength and the ease of sanding. You can see it's glossy, but I am going to need to sand areas because there's, you know. So I'm gonna sand it, that's fine, expected behavior. In about an hour I'll come back and redo one more layer. Cool. Now we have Masa listening to JDM music, but he's uh, um, but he's currently sanding our pet G bumper for mold making. What do you, what do you think so far about sanding this material? So the material itself is soft enough to be sanded pretty easily. Yeah. Um, what about the the epoxy? The epoxy is also equally sandable, so they're yeah. both relatively similar hardness, so it's okay. But it's just that. There's a lot of deep dips. Low, yeah. yeah so we're gonna fill that. that. The epoxy can't quite do, so I'm gonna definitely want to use actual filler. Okay, because we have more epoxy. So like, if we want to do these pieces, right? These are still raw. Hopefully, we have. I'm gonna leave the soft top on for now, um, and then Masa's gonna also once he's done with the printing, we're gonna prep the rest of the car because the paint's fading and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Other than that, hopefully by the time we're done, you won't be able to tell that this was 3D printed. Oh, you definitely won't be able to tell. It'll be sick. Yeah, this, this is showing a decent amount of promise right Yeah, now. so my main concern, uh, and it's no big deal if it's gone, there's supposed oh, to be a body line I'm there. Honest. I'm actually yeah. working to emphasize that. If you, can, if you can keep it on, great. If and, not, uh, not yeah, a big deal. Um, I'm working to make sure okay. there. And then you can tell everything yellowed because the epoxy's just been sitting outside for so long. Yeah, which is fine. The color difference also makes it easier to just, yeah. I figured. So maybe we just make that normal. Yeah, I mean, other than that, Pet G has lasted on the bumper. Like, it's, this has sat outside in California sun, and this hasn't been an issue. Yeah, I don't see any, um, like, sags, per se, from, like... Nah, the... correct. And I've done a pretty good job gluing it, so it shouldn't be too hard to sand it out. Also, I don't want it 100%, because this thing is probably going to get destroyed. Uh, we'll see. Yes, it's good. Cool. Exciting. After Masa worked his magic, you can see how our renders compare to our actual 3D printed prototype. Now it's just a matter of driving the car down to Southern California to hand off to RJ, our buddy at Big Duck Club, who also did our Subaru bumpers a few videos ago. Now let me leave it to RJ, who has shot this short message for you guys after taking possession of our car. Hey guys, how you doing? RJ over here enjoying this beautiful California winter time. But more than the beautiful winter, I'm excited about this little thing over here. Oh, and I am so excited that it's finally in my hands. We're about to start working on it, making sure that all the 3D printed parts are getting prepared, painted, sanded, and everything so we could actually start retailing them in carbon fiber or fiberglass. So over the next few videos, Epsilon is gonna show you a few steps into how to convert 3D printed parts into an actual moldable good that then it could be fabricated for massive consumption. So anyway, 
follow us, make sure that you're keeping up in this particular build. It is absolutely crazy. Everything that the guys have developed is out of this world and I am just so excited to put my hands on it. Make sure that it's an actual thing and you guys could buy it in the next few months.